Logic Pro 11.1 is finally here, and I'm going to do a complete roundup of all the key features. I'm Adam from AM Music, and I teach music production and mix and master music. Let's see what's new. So the first one, thank God this one's here. This one I've been waiting for for so long, and it's such a simple feature that every other door has it, but Logic has just not had it for the longest time, and that is just to be able to search for a plugin. A search function. Say so I've got a track I'm working on here. I wanna add an EQ to this bass, and I wanna add Pro-Q, Fab Filter. What I can just do now is, there's a search bar right at the top here, perfect. And it's got my recent, but if it wasn't a recent one, go pro Q three, enter. Wow, how easy is that? Saves you having to go all the way down to the bottom here. Remember that it's Fab Filter that manufactures Pro Q. Go to Pro Q. I mean, just saved me like 30 seconds just to add a plugin. It's not just audio effects, it also works for instruments. So if I create a new instrument, go instrument, and you can type here. So say I want Arturia. Uh, let's have an analog lab. Enter, and there you go, Analog Lab loads up. And it also works in the mixer window as well. So if we come to mixer, and if you wanna add in a plugin, you can search there, lovely stuff, super easy. Say I want a reverb. Ooh, what's that, Quantec? Oh, a new reverb plugin. Let's look at that in a second. You can search for the effects here, or you can do it for buses as well. So I know I've got a hall reverb in there. So if I type hall, there you go, bus three. That's going to send it to bus three nice and easily. Awesome. Just a tiny little thing, but it's going to save so much time. I never thought I'd be so happy about a search bar in my life. And the final note on the search is there's a shortcut for it as well. And that is control and command P and it'll bring up this window and you can search for any plugin here on your arrangement page. So uh, it's going to add it to my base lead, but say I want the reverb Quantec room simulator and it's added it down there easy. And that leads us into Logic's latest reverb plugin. So I've got a track I'm working on here. But this has got some kind of Native American chanting in it. This one here is dry. So I wanted to add a reverb to that. I've now got a new reverb plugin. So, so the Quantec QRS was introduced in 1982 and it is a renowned digital reverb known for creating really realistic sounding rooms. Rather than modeling actual rooms, they focused on recreating the resonances within the room and that gave it a more realistic sound. So there's two modes here. You've got the Quantec QRS and you've got the Quantec Yardstick. These are two different models of Quantec reverb. QRS came out first and then the Yardstick was a revision later on. Both got slightly different characters so you've got the reverb time over here and it goes all the way up to 20 seconds here which is amazing you can stick that on and you can go out for lunch have a sandwich and the reverb will still be going and if you apply the freeze mode then that will just keep that reverb going forever so that's a cool creative effect you could add to your productions next window over you've got the reverb time multiplier it's similar to an eq but it's just gonna let you decide where you want more of the build up of the reverb to be so if i do that it's going to be more high end and less low end or the reverse is true there And then you've got all your kind of normal reverb controls over here, room size. And if you increase that room size, this allows your reverb time to go up even further to 100 seconds. So that's insane. Uh, you've got the dry signal. So I'm on a bus here. So my dry signal is down. And you've got different first reflections here. So delay level and then reverb delay and then reverb level. So you can play around with those. Uh, you've got this enhance button down here as well. So when you press the enhance button, it takes out the reverb time and it just gives you a cluster of dense reflections. And then you've got the second mode, you've got the yardstick. So just similar controls again, but different characters, pretty much exactly the same. You've got the primary, you've got the room size. So that's gonna affect this, as we said before, dry level. If you aren't on a bus, then you'd have that higher. You've got the reverb density here, you've got the first reflection level, you've got the reverb delay, and you've got reverb level here. And you've got a secondary panel here, so you can cut the reverb highs, you can change the spread of the first reflection, you can change the reflection delay, you can affect the bass, 
can affect the base crossover. You've also got the freeze mode as you had before. You've got a few different modes here as well. So it starts on complex, but you also got simple. The simple seems to be a bit more subtle. You've also got medium. Medium sounds a bit more realistic and more natural and complex. And the complex sounds a bit more full, a bit more dense, a bit more rich. You've got a load of presets as well. Small rooms, medium rooms, large rooms, QRS classics and warped rooms. Awesome, I think that sounds great. Okay, so the third feature is that you can now, in the mixer window, move tracks, which you couldn't do before. So say I've got these vocal ones here and I wanna move them to this place over here. If you just click and hold and then drag, it now lets you move them. And this was never a huge problem for me. I never really felt like I wanted to move stuff via the mixer window, but you can select multiple things and then click, hold, and then move them around and it's going to move them around on this arrangement page as well. So, so I want to move the hats and the tambourine below the congas. You can move them there and it's going to move them there. So that's a nice little addition. I never really felt like I needed it, but it's cool to have. But whilst we're in the mixer window, here is my fourth favorite new feature. And that is that you can now remove a plugin without having to click on it and go no plugin. You can just hold command. You get this little eraser come up and you can click and then it disappears. So see ya. You can get rid of plugins a lot quicker, a lot easier, which is quite nice, simple feature. So the next new feature is one I probably won't be using too much because I don't use an iPhone. But what you can do is if you finished your track, you want to export it you can now share it direct to voice memos you can now quickly export something so it will appear in your phone so you're on an iphone in your voice memos or on any other device then you can now share directly to that and you can do it as uh, an mp3 from 64 kilobytes up to 256 kilobytes so share and that will do that and you can do it by cycle or just by total length so you hit share done like that's a cool feature. So the next one, if you use the custom mode on the display, so up here, this is the one I tend to use, custom. What you can also do now is add in, customize. If you customize the display, you can now add in the sample rate and buffer size. So if you notice here now, you can change your project to 48 or 88.2, 96, 192. That doesn't change too much for me. I tend to stick between 44 or 48. But however, now they've added in the buffer size, so you can quickly change to say 1024, or you can change to 64. So you can change the buffer size there without having to go into file uh, settings, uh, audio, and changing it here. And if you're unsure why you would do that is because you get less latency when you have the buffer size smaller. So when you're recording something, if you want to reduce the latency of the recording, uh, and then if you need more computing power, you need a bigger buffer speed when you're using a lot more plugins, etc. When you get further into mixing, then you can increase to 512 or 1024 and you'll find that Logic won't crash as much. And the final thing I think worth knowing about in the latest Logic Pro update is that there are some new sound packs. So if you go up here and you go to Logic Pro and you you go to sound library and you go to open sound library manager there are two new ones there's modular melodies synth pack so you can add that and the other one is the producer pack pom pom who the f is pom pom i'm already pretty maxed out on my mac with third party stuff so i'm probably not going to use them but yeah by all means dive in and one final thing i forgot to mention is there are some bounce in place features that are worth checking out as well so say so i've got a kick drum here and i want to bounce that in place go bounce in place and you've now got this drop down menu here so you can put it to one file you can put it to one file per track or you can put it to one file per region if i was to select multiple tracks and do that and now bounce in place so if i was now to go to one file it would bounce them into one file so there you go but if i did one file per track it's going to bounce them down separately so you go i've got one two got them individually but if i had done multiple regions and now i do bounce in place go one file per region it's going to bounce them all down as individual regions 
So you see the difference there? You've just got a bit more flexibility now with the bounce in place feature. So there's some great new features added. Let me know what you think about them. Tell me in the comments below. I really love the sound of the Quantec Revo and it complements Space Designer really well. And I can't explain how happy I am about the search function. These are the main two parts of the update for me. If you're a newcomer to Logic Pro, then you may find this video helpful. Or if you've been around the Logic Block for a while, then maybe these hidden features are new to you. Check them out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on another video. Take care.